Hey fellow patriots, Bravo Echo here, and uh, today I want to shoot a podcast on bags, and I'm here in Sevier County, near uh, Sevierville, outside the Smoky Mountains, a few miles from uh, Pigeon Forge, and uh, this is one of my favorite places. Uh, when I'm out driving, I like to uh, um, go visit in the fall. Uh, Blowing Cave Baptist Church. As you can see, uh, it's a small church, very small here in the hills. Um, and you can see it's surrounded by beautiful trees and the leaves are changing um, right now still. We're supposed to get our first frost later this week, actually two consecutive nights. So. Um, these leaves will be coming down pretty soon. So uh, let's get on with uh, talking about bags. Uh, in this podcast, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, bags. Um, <clears throat> the question of what goes into your uh, day bag or three day bag or bug out bag, um, it's all personal. Um, as long as you have a change of clothing, uh, backups to your clothing comfortable shoes or boots to walk in, ample supply of socks, <clears throat> some mole skin for your feet, um, food rations, water, uh, something to sanitize your uh, water with if need be, some type of filtration, bottle, way to start fire and so forth. Um, you can personalize your bag um, using uh, items from checklist we've provided um, numerous checklists at Hope for Survival, but I've been getting a lot of questions about bags, confusion of bags, what kind of bag you might need um, to pack. Um, it's all personal preference <clears throat> based around your living conditions. Uh, do you, are you retired? Do you commute? Um, for example, uh, not long ago, um, Miss Lucy and I worked about 240 miles from our home, so we had a secondary place to stay. <clears throat> but our plan was always during an emergency that we would uh, depart uh, or bug out and head to um, our main home. Again, it's 240 miles away. We had a communication plan or a pace plan in place uh, for these procedures, we had a backup copy of it uh, with a trusted agent <clears throat> to use. And our plan was to go mobile uh, as far as mobility would allow us to go. And then um, if need be, uh, we would go on foot if we had to. Uh, hopefully not for ourselves and for any of you that you would ever have to do that. Um, but we built it into our plan, okay? Uh, we had a primary, secondary, and a third route mapped out, <clears throat> uh, and that's all based off of conditions, um, how we were doing, uh, and threats, right? Because uh, we had we had to have crossed numerous waterways. So uh, that was with our bug out. But um, what I wanted to talk to you about was bags, right? So. Right here, the small bag, I call this my day bag, okay? And I normally had it in my vehicle every day or I would keep it at my desk. And I, in here, I had things that I would need to cover me for a day um, in the event, say, conditions that my job changed, if I needed to go out in the um, weather, seasonal, hat, suntan lotion, soft shoes, um, backup shoes and clothes, rain gear, and so forth. Any medicines that may be needed, nut uh, nutrition, and also a way to hydrate myself. This bag is smaller, as you can see, and I call this my day bag. Um, and you can use, some, some ladies would use just like a regular uh, bag. It's like a, a large purse. Uh, I prefer to have a backpack uh, type item. And in here, I also kept some minimal first aid. Then I also had what's called a three-day bag. 
what I have in my three-day bag is in the event um, I had to go out of town, say, for 30, 40, 50 miles away. If I went 30 or 40 miles away, uh, I had a three-day bag with a kit in it. And this was basically like a one-day bag. Uh, it just had expanded items in it. Things, if I was away from home, what I need to survive for my three days. Again, seasonal. Also consider where you live in the U.S. It may be warmer in Florida in December than it would be in the north or you know central central U.S. or northwest United States. Uh, here where I'm at in the Tennessee Hills, we do have winter, but it's not as severe as say uh, Pennsylvania. So um, this here I call my three-day bag. All right, and it's a backpack. And then. This item here, I call this my bug out bag. This bag here is packed in such a way that it's packed in such a way that uh, circumstances are out of my control. I may have to leave my home, get chased out by a threat, fire, flood. I pack this bag uh, in the event I'm not going back home. Okay, at least not anytime soon. So. I have more food in this than I would my three day or my day bag. Uh, I have a little more first aid, right? I have some tools, uh, bolt cutters, uh, pry bar, uh, things of that nature. I have uh, more socks, more underclothes and things of that nature. Um, this bag here weighs more, of course. Um, I have more water filtration. I have the ability to cook food and uh, things of that nature. Um, you'll, have to be, you'll have to pack this again based on, based on your body size. Um, most bags like this are uh, normally no more than 25 to 30 pounds. Remember, you gotta carry it. You may have pet supplies, you may have children's supplies, things of that nature. So you're gonna have to pack it and test it to see what you can carry. Also, um, don't buy the bag and then buy the resources to go into it. You want to buy the resources that you're going to need and then buy a bag that will, it will fit into. Put the bag on. Fit it. See how it feels on your back, on your shoulders, on your neck. Um, remember, you got to carry it, so you need something that's going to be comfortable uh, and something that fits you, right? Um, you can get these in camouflage personally. I did not want camouflage Because um, to me uh, psychologically uh, Something that's camouflage even though you may blend in better uh, around other uh, Average folks who you may run into <clears throat> They're gonna have <clears throat> excuse me street colors, okay? two key items um, I also have a bag um, that I keep. It's a small first aid bag. It has uh, minimal items with, uh, within it. Um, I can strap this onto a backpack. It's uh, very light. And then I have a larger first aid kit. And I carry, I carry this in my vehicle. Right? Uh, I have one. Miss Lucy has one. And uh, we keep these items with us. Uh, we have uh, 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 items that we think that we're going to need. Uh, we keep two, at least two tourniquets. One tourniquet is for uh, belongs to myself, or in her case, to her. And then if we come up on a, uh, an event that requires a tourniquet, we never use our tourniquet, okay? Because that tourniquet might be the one that saves your own life, okay? Another bag um, that you could consider is uh, kind of like kind of like a fanny pack. Um, you can strap it around your waist. Um, you can use this specifically as a first aid kit, or you can put specific items that you would need often in here. Um, it's all dependent upon you, your circumstances. Personally, uh, I have communication gear packed within this bag. Okay. It's a little bit heavier. It weighs about 
about four or five pounds. So uh, I have comm gear in here. I can throw it over my shoulder. I can deploy it outside of my vehicle or I can take it on foot with me. So um, these are the bags. Um, I hope that they help you out. If you have uh, any questions, reach out. Uh, just don't rush out and buy this stuff. Make a good list, narrow it down. What do you have to have versus what you want? Uh, remember one is none, two is one, and three is better. You may have five items, but if two of those items will do the task of one of the other ones, you may want to downsize that item and, and use uh, the single item to do multiple tasks. This will free up space and it'll also free up weight, okay? So keep that in, in mind as well uh, when you're putting your kits together. So um, hope this helps. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, reach out. You can email me at preparedness101 at protonmail.com. You can come visit us at uh, www.hopeforsurvival.com. Uh, we're on YouTube. <clears throat> we're on uh, Rumble, Odyssey, and uh, Facebook. So uh, friend us, hit like, and uh, follow along. Come join us, okay? We're trying to prepare families for self-reliance for that self-insurance policy. So again, uh, thanks for tuning in. Be blessed. Stay safe. Bravo Echo out.